Hi, this is Talking with Tam with your host, Tamara Russo, and my guest today is Billy Jackson. Hello. Hey, Billy. guys. I've known Billy for a while. Billy, I think you've been friends with my son, Victor, for how many years? Do you even know? Somewhere around the six to seven years. Okay, so Billy, I think I met you when you were in Lego Robotics. That may be the first time I met you. Yeah. And what got you interested in joining Lego Robotics? I mean, like, it's, it's not something that I'm, like, personally all that invested in or interested in, mm -hmm. but um, it's, it's definitely something that my friends were at the time. And um, I'm always looking for an experience that can, you know, help, you know, broaden my perspective. Does it expose you to different... different types of people because okay. different people were interested in that than, than you know um, me personally at the time yeah yeah so you recently graduated from high school congratulations yes, thank you what's your plans from here where what are you thinking about doing well I'm just um I'm enrolled at UNC Asheville this fall so okay. I'm gonna try to get my degree in political science uh, minor in philosophy very good why political science Billy well I mean the plan isn't to necessarily use my degree directly out of college I mean of course everything could change in a period of four years that's a long time sure but, um, yeah, I guess just, um, it's something I've always been pretty interested in, pretty passionate about, um, you know, I'm sharing my views and opinions in um, a way that is, you know, directed toward the political body of America. Recently, I saw you reading at high school in front of the old Poplar Schoolhouse. What were you reading? I, I wrote a speech um, for Martin Luther King Jr. Day. Mm -hmm. um, um, you know, we, we come from a pretty isolated area. Um, we come from a place where people aren't as educated about, um, you know, dealing with race. Sure. And a lot of people aren't really as educated on the topic of the Civil Rights Movement just because it's not something that affects them directly mm -hmm. or people that they know very well directly. Sure. Um, so, yeah, I was, um, um, I was contacted by the school and asked to write a speech about it. So I decided to, you know, do a Martin Luther King Jr. Day piece and I read it over the intercom. And then later they filmed it. They decided they were going to film it and put it on their Facebook page. Sure. Yeah. Um, so that was something that I was, you know, more than happy to do, you know, to try to help out, you know, just spread some awareness. I was very impressed with Billy, and uh, take a look at that. Good morning. I'm here today to speak to you about the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. as we're approaching the 31st annual Martin Luther King Jr. Day celebration. Martin Luther King Jr. is a name that is universally known and one that instills images of a bold leader across the globe, but a name can only depict so much of what was the immense body of work that Dr. King stood for and what those inspired continue to stand for today. Martin Luther King Jr. was a man whose captivating integrity, burning passion, and unwavering devotion to his cause launched forward what is perhaps one of the greatest demonstrations for equal rights documented in U.S. history. At the March on Washington alone in August of 1963, there were an estimated 250,000 people who gathered in the nation's capital to hear Dr. King's incomparable I Have a Dream speech. It was there on a sunny summer afternoon where King would not use his fists, but his words of indefinite magnitude to fight against a corrupt America chained to the broken system of segregation in the name of freedom. While we're on that, we are isolated here in Mitchell County in western North Carolina. Give me your thoughts, if you would like, on some of the things that you're seeing out in the, not just the communities, but in the, in the country and what you're seeing on television. And being that you are a political science major, is what you're looking at. Do you have any thoughts? Uh, because a lot of people feel like it's gloom and doom, it's worse than ever, it's worse pre-Martin Luther King days, I'll say. Do you have any insights on that or input on that? No, yeah, definitely. Um, that's such a tough them because there is so much to say. It's such a complex topic. Um, there are no easy answers. There aren't any easy solutions. Um, you know, I just, just take it one step at a time. Um, as far as for, um, you know, that's the thing, you know, I can talk about specifically um, our community, but I feel like that gives you such a poor perspective of everything else that's going on as well. Sure. As far as um, just generally speaking, something that I see around here that I also, I'm sure, I'm aware that it's happening in other places. Growing up as a minority here wasn't, you know, the easiest thing to do, and um, I did face some discrimination early on from people that just, you know, they, they didn't know any better um, because it is such an isolated area and it's something that it wasn't as, you know, taboo as it is in other areas where there are more protected minorities and people that can share their stories and experience. People people are just unaware that they're that they're in any way, shape, or form being discriminatory towards anyone. But um, certain things that people will say or certain things that people will do can act in a way um, or can be, you know, misconstrued as a form of discrimination whenever that's totally not what they what they were meaning to do. But it's all it all comes from just misunderstanding. Sure. And um, I feel a big, big part of you know, 
um, the discrimination, and I, that goes that goes both ways. I'm not just talking about one one side versus the other. This mm -hmm. is this is this is a two way street. This is something that affects everyone. Right. And um, you know, I, I could say you know, like I'm not gonna act like I'm immune to that that system that we live in that is so geared towards pitting people against each other. Sure. Sure. Um, you know, it is such a two way street. It's it's definitely something that um, is a lot bigger and more complex than people tend to believe. It's not just about explicit actions. It's about the way that uh, it's, it's it's about having more consideration. For, for people around you, um, just generally speaking, um, learning to communicate with them on a basis that is, you know, respectful, right. um, regardless of, you know, it's just being more educated about that in general. But what I hear you saying is that there's two sides. So while we, we see some of this, and we definitely see it, and across this country we're yes. still seeing it, that both sides have to take ownership and communicate. And sometimes it's ignorance on both sides. Okay. I mean, like you were talking Most about, definitely. some of it's culture, some of it's not thinking straight. I hate to say it that way, but you're just not thinking before you're speaking. You know, nobody's says anything and I think I think that's what I'm hearing you say. Yeah, I mean, it's especially somewhere like around here where people just aren't exposed to different cultures, aren't exposed um, to different, you know, types of people. They don't really have that understanding that, you know, things in their culture, mm -hmm. um, you know, because we do live in a place that does protect, they treasure, they, they really, really prize um, those things that were um, and are, you know, kept as a tradition in the past. Right. But, um, you know, some of those things to other people can be highly offensive. Sure. Um, we have to be more sensitive sensitive to those types of issues, um, but I think that's, you know, definitely, that's not just here, it's everywhere. Sure, yeah. Um, just the exposure that people have, generally speaking. And you grew up here in Western North Carolina and Mitchell County, so you definitely have a different perspective of the heritage, very proud people, hardworking mm -hmm. people, and if you read the stories and some of the stories I've been told in private that not everybody talks about, mm -hmm. there's a lot of good things that happen oh, back in the day definitely. also, but people are, I think you're starting to hear a little bit more because of what's happening in our country, um, and I think things appear to maybe be getting better, but definitely still some issues all across the board in this country and, and here. Okay, so I, I want to skip to something that we're going to show at the end of this uh, interview is your dancing and I'd like to know a little bit of how you got started and kind of your background with dance because I know okay. that's something you're passionate about. Oh definitely. So go ahead share with us. Yeah so um, I guess you know just because we come from an area that's so small and there isn't as much to do um, you, you, in a lot of ways you have to make your own fun. Sure. And um, fun for me was definitely learning how to do new things. Trying to teach myself how to do something that I thought was interesting or cool at the time and um, definitely one of those things that's been a part of my life just you know all throughout has been dance mm -hmm. I can remember you know even before I taught myself anything you know I was always I remember being at my sister's wedding I was what eight or nine years old you know just dancing away having a sure. good time but um I think it was um in sixth grade I saw a music video the music video was for party rock and LMFAO song okay that came out um it was very very popular at the time and there was a lot of dancing in it mm -hmm. and it was really really cool to me and I remember um seeing a movie and I was like I wish I could do that or you know I think that I could maybe I could learn how to do that you know and uh, I ended up doing some searches on YouTube looking at tutorials from there it just really really evolved into what it is today I, I really didn't have any idea what style was being done or you know the significance of the, the culture behind it or anything like that which I've done a lot of research furthermore you know to, to really enhance my understanding of it all yeah I think um, it started with that I started learning party dances okay um, things that you do it like you know your, your local school dance or something mm -hmm. like that and then I saw a video of a guy doing something that just looked like it's inhuman the way he was able to move and I was like oh, I would love to learn how to do that I did some more research into it learned the style was called animation which is under the umbrella of popping which comes from Fresno California okay there from there I just started learning more and more and more about it and I've just been you know doing, doing it ever since so I know you've taught yourself have you taken any formal dance or from there or have you done strictly all just teaching oh, definitely yourself? I've done a lot of after after I learned some of my animation some of my hip-hop some of my popping mm -hmm. I decided to take some dance classes just because you know the more you know in any style it can it can help spill over to the other styles that you already you know okay. to help enhance them as well it's like every style has a foundation mm -hmm. um, and it teaches you something so let's say for instance um, ballet it's a highly technical style mm -hmm. um, it teaches you a lot about controlling your core mm -hmm. about controlling your posture about um, isolating movements with your legs being able to hold those poses those those oscillations it gives you a lot of leg strength it gives you a good 
foundation for ballet, but that also spills over into other styles. Because the more control you have over your body in general, or the more um, the more highly skilled you are in being able to oscillate certain joints in your body, or the more strength that you have built up, the more you are just um, adept in learning new things in your dance and using that to enhance, you know, the, the quality of your dance in any style. Sure. So I used um, I used ballet, tap, jazz, contemporary, modern, and I took that time out there. I started with Miss Ginger in Bakersville. Uh -huh. Wonderful woman, love her to death. Yeah. Then um, after my first year with her, her um, protege, Sarah Jane, mm -hmm. Um, she started teaching there and I just kept taking classes until I eventually became a teacher there as well But I've kept taking classes, right? So right. Um, I mean now I've done everything from ballet tap jazz contemporary modern like I said I've done mm -hmm. clogging Okay, um, I've done some swing dancing, you know stuff like that. Of course, you know I did like the square dance is not really much friend foundation okay. in that but yeah, you know um, fun Just it's all fun <laughs> and the more you do the the better it is for every style that you're trying to pursue it just gives you more information about the way your body works and the more you know about how your body works the better you can be at dancing in general. Sure, sure. So do you see that, I know you're going off to college and, and all that, but you'll continue with your dance? Oh, most For definitely. Sure. That, yeah. That's that's the plan. Um, I, I love I love um, the idea of getting my education, of getting my degree. Yeah. Um, but I definitely um, hope to pursue dance in the future as a full time career, um, possibly. You yeah. Know, if at all possible, but you can't. You know, you can't just dive head first and not have anything else planned. You gotta have sure. a backup. Plan, backup so plan. <laughs> definitely gotta have my degree. <laughs> Always helps. You never know. Never know. Well, that's very exciting. I can't wait to share with my viewers. Let let them see some of your dance moves because I've, again, I've seen some of your videos and I'm always astonished at how number one because I'm in physical therapy how the body moves and you talk about core we teach you know just working on your core strength just for your back and things like that mm -hmm. but how important uh, I'll share with you I took a, an adult ballet class never had taken dance in my yeah. life and my friend Judy said Tam you got to come on over and try this but it is extremely difficult oh, I mean you definitely. talk about some strength and you see the moves and, and you know that it's very upper body strength core so it's impressive and, and you're pretty impressive with your moves Billy I'll tell you. Oh, I appreciate that. And, and you guys are going to see what I'm talking about when you see him dance because I'm like, how in the world does he do that? <laughs> so I'm impressed. Thank you for having me on. I appreciate it. Thank you, it. Billy. I appreciate it. Thank you guys for joining us. Anybody have any questions, pop them in to the comment section and we'll get back with you. Again, thank you for joining me on Talking with Tam and we will see you next time. Take care.
me and you in Lego robotics. <laughs> it's totally. Get out! Get out! I saw Get out! 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 Um, I don't want to say that. Just give me some new, um, give me some new, um, ah, oh, I'm doing terrible. <laughs> I'll just, I'll 